Hi, so in this video I'll be giving a quick introduction into the income and substitution effects. So I'll just jump straight into it and as in the previous video I gave an introduction to the demand curve, we'll be talking about the income effect and substitution effect in trying to explain the downward sloping demand curve we have and hopefully the demand curve will help us illustrate what we actually mean by the income and the substitution effect. Uh, these are quite important concepts in economics and people can tend to get them a bit confused but luckily the names of these two effects uh, does give a hint as to which which one each of them is. So we'll start with the income effect and this says that as the price of a good falls the amount that a consumer can buy increases. So a consumer effectively has more income so demand for that good will increase and this is why we call it the income effect because we're effectively increasing the income of a consumer. So as an example let's consider that a consumer has £100 in their bank account and they are looking to buy a good that costs £5 and let's just say that it's books and for simplicity let's just say that they're only going to spend their income on books uh, we, we could think that they, they don't necessarily just have £100 in their bank account, but they've set aside £100 to purchase books. So clearly here they can buy 20 books. They can buy 20 books for £5, that's £100, and they exhaust their budget. But what if the price of books fell to £4? Well, effectively their real income has increased. And why why is this? Well, their actual income or the amount in their bank account we're saying that that hasn't changed, they still have £100 in their bank account, but the amount of goods that this can purchase has increased. Because the books have reduced to £4, they can now buy 25 books with the same amount of income, but they effectively have more income because their income can buy more. So their demand, because of the change in price, is going to increase from 20 to 25 and we have an increase in demand due to the fall in price due to an income effect and we can consider this on a demand curve where okay if the price is five pounds we are going to demand 20 books but if the price falls to four pounds we are then going to demand a higher quantity which is 25 and this is why our demand curve is downward sloping because as we move down the demand curve and we reduce our price we are going to increase our quantity demanded and we have a negative relationship between price and quantity demanded so the demand curve which we should have labeled d is downward sloping so that's our income effect is that as the price of a good falls just taking everything else as constant our real income is effectively increasing because we can buy more with the same amount of income so we increase our demand so that is the income effect the next one that we're going to consider, and the final one in this video, is going to be the substitution effect, which is very different, but it can equally explain a downward sloping demand curve. So if I can try and fit everything onto the screen at the same time there. So, okay, uh, in this substitution effect, as the price of a good falls, we still have the price of a good falling, it becomes relatively cheaper than the other goods. So consumers will substitute and hence why it's called the substitution effect consumption towards the cheaper good increasing demand so again we have the price of a good falling and so the demand of it increases but we have a different mechanism and this is what we think of with the income and substitution effects while they may be doing the same thing sometimes they do different things uh, but that's a topic for a future video but for our downward sloping demand we think of them as a good uh, decreasing in price and so its demand increases so they both act in the same way overall but they act through a different mechanism so for the substitution effect let's consider again that we have a hundred pounds in our bank account but now we're not just consuming one good let's say that we are setting aside currently 50 pounds and we're spending this on uh, 10 pound books yeah let's keep let's keep this with books 
but we are consuming different uh, quality of books or different kinds of books that are different values. So currently we're purchasing uh, 10 books for £5 and 5 books for £10 each. And so we're spending £50 on these £10 books and £5 on £50 as well on these £5 books. We're just buying 5 of these £10 books and 10 of these £5 books. Now let's consider again that the price of these £5 books decreases to £4. So we've reduced the price of our £5 books, but the price of the £10 books stays the same. Well, we could, in theory, just buy two more of these uh, £5 books because we can now buy 12 books for £48 and that would be an income effect because we effectively have more income, we can buy more because it's cheaper. However, we're, in this case, we're thinking of the substitution effect. And when we think of substitution effect, we're thinking, okay, these £10 books, I'm still getting the same value for money for these, it's £10 for a book, this is exactly the same. However, when, when these £5 books have decreased in price, they are now better value for money than, the, than they were in the past. And so I want to buy even more than just 12 because they are relatively cheaper. So I might want to spend more of my relative budget on them. So what I can do instead is I then, I am now deciding to spend 60 pounds on these four pound books. So 60 pounds on four pound books. So my demand becomes 15. And then that only leaves 40 pounds to spend on the 10 pound books. So I only buy four of the £10 books and I'm buying 15 of these £4 books. And so as you can see, I've decreased my consumption of these expensive books to purchase more of these cheaper books because they're cheaper. And this, I acknowledge that this example may be a little bit tricky to follow. So we can think of another quick example. Let's consider that we're spending half of our income on meat and half of our income on bread. And we really like meat, but it's really expensive. And we don't really like bread, but it's really cheap. So we, we buy bread because it's cheap and for no other real reason, because we need nutrition. And if we can't really, if we spend all of our money on meat, it's too expensive to actually get a decent meal out of. However, if the price of meat falls, then I can justify spending more of my money on meat because I can get more of it for the same amount and I can get more of it or I can get enough of it to give me a proper meal. So I'm going to increase my demand for meat a lot because I can now justify spending lots on it because it is also cheap and this bread is now relatively more expensive compared to the meat so I decrease my demand for the bread. So hopefully that's made more sense. We can we can again put plot this on the uh, demand curve here, which we'll label D. And we can say that again, if we're thinking about these five pound books, we were initially demanding 10 of these books, but once the price fell to four pounds, we increased our demand to 15 of these books uh, as we as we said uh, with this example. And now not all of this was coming necessarily from a substitution effect. As I said, some of it was coming from an income effect, but decomposing into these two different effects uh, is a topic for a different video as it's a bit complicated, but I hope that that made some sense. If the, if the example was a bit complicated, I was just making it up off the top of my head. So, I acknowledge I may not have explained that very well. However, if we remember these definitions and then think about the examples, it should make more sense that as the price of a good falls, it becomes relatively cheaper than other goods. So we tend to buy more of it because it is relatively cheaper. The income effect to recap, as the price of a good falls, the just pure amount that a consumer can buy will increase. So they effectively have more income, so demand increases. And as such, in both of them, as we've seen, we have a negative relationship between price 
and quantity demanded. So we have a downward sloping demand curve. So that will just about wrap up this video. Please do drop a like if it was at all useful. Make sure to subscribe to add some economics to your subscription feed and check out the playlist for some more introductory economics.